Hello, good morning, welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's 8 o'clock on Wednesday the 19th of April and uh, I'm reading Common Worship Daily Prayer from the Church of England. Lesser Festival of Alphedge, I think that's how it's pronounced, or Alphigi, Archbishop of Canterbury. Morning prayer, Easter season, common worship. You'll find it in the Common Worship Daily Prayer book towards the beginning after prayer during the day. Online at Arima's Daily Prayer and at the Church of England's website. And one may also download apps compatible with Apple or Android devices to uh, read there. And uh, one is usually available offline for a small subscription, which is well worth paying if you find yourself in that situation. I'm recording the audio and will upload that onto my Dominic Doble YouTube channel. You're welcome to join me at the building also. The Zoom codes are on the Blythe Church's website and Facebook page and we're live streaming on the latter. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation, to you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The Easter Anthems. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying he died to sin once for all, in living he lives to God. See yourselves therefore as dead to sin, and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The Psalms appointed this morning, you'll find at the back of the book, are 16 and 30. We scroll onto them if you are following electronically. Psalms 16 and 30. <clears throat> the Lord is at my right hand, I shall not fall. Preserve me, O God, for in you have I taken refuge. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, all my good depends on you. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble in heart. Though the idols are legion that many run after, their drink offerings of blood I will not offer, neither make mention of their names upon my lips. The Lord himself is my portion and my cup, in your hands alone is my fortune. My share has fallen in a fair land, indeed I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel, and in the night watches he instructs my heart. I have set the Lord always before me. He is at my right hand, I shall not fall. Wherefore my heart is glad and my spirit rejoices. My flesh also shall rest secure. For you will not abandon my soul to death, nor suffer your faithful one to see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is the fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The Lord is at my right hand, I shall not fall.
You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have raised me up, and have not let my foes triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you, and you have healed me. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored me to life from among those that go down to the pit. Sing to the Lord, you servants of his. Give thanks to his holy name. For his wrath endures but the twinkling of an eye, his favour for a lifetime. Heaviness may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. In my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. You, Lord, by your, of your goodness, have made my hill so strong. Then you hid your face from me, <clears throat> and I was utterly dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried. To the Lord, I made my supplication. What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. Therefore my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. <coughs> Scrolling past our first reading to the Canticle of Song of Moses and Miriam, turning back in our books to morning prayer during Easter season. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. Alleluia. I will sing to the Lord who has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. <coughs> the Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. This is my God whom I will praise, the God of my forebears whom I will exalt. The Lord is a warrior, the Lord is his name. <clears throat> your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. At the blast of your nostrils the sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed, and by your invincible strength you will guide them to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them, O Lord, in the sanctuary which your hands have established. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. Alleluia. <coughs> this from Kindle edition of Celebrating the Saints. Alfage became a monk at Deerhurst near Gloucester and withdrew in later life to be a hermit in Somerset. The Archbishop of Canterbury Dunstan drew him back to be Abbot of Bath and in 984 Bishop of Winchester. In 1005 he was made Archbishop of Canterbury where his austere life and lavish almsgiving made him a revered, a revered and much loved man. In the year 1011, the Danes overran the south-east England, taking Alfred prisoner. They put the enormous ransom of £3,000 on his head, but Alfred refused to pay it and forbade anyone from doing so, knowing that it would impoverish the ordinary people even more. He was brutally murdered by his captors at Greenwich on this day in the year 1012. <coughs> An extraordinary and exemplary life. <clears throat> don't know very much about him, surprised we don't know more. Our first Bible reading is from the third or fourth book of the Hebrew Scriptures, Deuteronomy. I'll just have a look because it will pop up from time and again and I wasn't quite sure. No, it's actually the fifth book. <clears throat> so it is the final book of the Torah, the fifth book of the Hebrew Scriptures. Uh, Deuteronomy means, I think, second book of the law or something like that. Um, so if you're following the Bible, open at the beginning, Genesis, then Exodus, etc, etc, uh, five books in, you'll find Deuteronomy, we're looking for the large number three at the head of the paragraph, that's the chapter number, and the small numbers in the text are the verses from 18 to the end. If you're following online, just scroll back from the canticle we read a moment ago, the Song of Moses and Miriam. At that time I charged you as follows, although the Lord your God has given you this land to occupy, all your troops shall cross over arms, the vanguard of your Israelite kin, only your wives, your children, and your livestock. I know that you have much livestock, shall stay behind in the towns that I have given you. When the Lord gives rest to your kindred as to you, and they have occupied the land that the Lord your God is giving them beyond the Jordan, then each of you may return to the properties I have given to you. And charge Joshua as well at that time, saying, Your own eyes have seen everything in the Lord your God has done to these two kings, so the Lord will do to all the kingdoms into which you are about to cross. Do not fear them, for it is the Lord your God who fights for you. 
At that time too I entreated the Lord, saying, O Lord God, you have only begun to show your servant your greatness and your might. What God in heaven or earth can perform deeds and mighty acts like yours? Let me cross over to see the good land beyond the Jordan, that good hill country and the Leb that good hill country and the Lebanon. But the Lord was angry with me on your account and would not heed me. The Lord said to me, Enough from you, never speak to me of this matter again. Go up to the top of Pisgah and look around to the west, the north, the south, and east. Look well, for you shall not cross over this Jordan, but to charge Joshua, Joshua and encourage and strengthen him, because it is he who shall cross over at the head of the people, and who shall secure their possession of the land that you will see. So we remained in the valley opposite Beth Peel. <coughs> <coughs> So I think this first paragraph is in relation to is it the two tribes that said they actually preferred the land on the other side of the River Jordan to the promised land. And uh, with the typical Jewish justice, they were instructed, apparently by God, to actually fight at the forefront of the battle, be the vanguard. And then once the land had been captured, the whole land for the other tribes, they could return back if they wanted to to live on um, the near side of the Jordan. And so that's what that first um, paragraph is about. Um, leave your livestock and your family behind, um, but you go and fight and then come back to them once that has all been achieved. And then the second paragraph um, is a very good study for people who are moving on from one job to another, especially if it's a job within a faith community. And. Uh, I suspect we all have those hopes that are just around the corner, just beyond the horizon, things that we had hoped we would achieve in our tenure, and we haven't managed it. And uh, poor Moses, his whole <coughs> um, life's work was to get God's people from slavery into the promised land. I haven't actually gone through it with a fine tooth comb to see whether God said you will physically yourself walk ahead of God's people into the promised land. So it may well be that he has achieved actually all that he had set out to do he has got them to within a hair's breadth it's a little bit like david building the temple actually his um, second uh, son of the woman he raped and had a husband killed uh, solomon he actually got to build david's temple because david was apparently a man of war but he'd got as far as he possibly could to actually laying the foundation stone without actually doing so according to some of the scriptures and the others make it much more Solomon's temple as it is actually known. Uh, I think I'm right in saying uh, more recently it's called Solomon's temple. I think the gospel speak of Solomon's rather than David's. Uh, but we, many of us, whether in ministry or not, uh, if you like, uniform ministry, <laughs> uh, who work for God will have hopes and aspirations. Even if we're not working for God, there will be things that we'd hope we might have achieved in our life this week today, which we will not and we have to let other people conclude and complete that work. <clears throat> and uh, it was tough for Moses, but we, here we have a scripture that demonstrates one can see what's going to happen, even if we don't have a part of it ourselves. And let us strive as um, bat and runners in a relay race to play our part. We are part of a team, <clears throat> and we may not necessarily actually be the one that crosses the line, but unless we play our part, our team won't win. To the Song of Moses, no, to the second reading, uh, John 20 from 19 to the end. Scroll on to it past the canticle, if you're following online. If you're using the Bible, John is the fourth of the Gospels. So uh, if you're turning in your printed edition of the Bible, both covenants in 2 3 way through, you'll find the second covenant beginning there with Matthew, then Mark, Luke, and John, fourth Gospel. We're looking for the large number 20 at the head of the paragraph, chapter number 20. And small numbers in the text itself, the verses. We're starting at verse 19 this time. John 20 from 19. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and, he, and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them again. It was with them, although the doors were shut. The doors were shut. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. 
Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. <clears throat> the story of uh, Jesus appearing to some of the disciples, not including Thomas, and uh, Thomas requiring experience, proof that he can attest himself. He is called Doubting Thomas as a result of this, but he could be called Brave Thomas, because elsewhere, when Jesus says, let's go to Jerusalem, and the disciples say, no, he says, I'm ready to die with you. <clears throat> and indeed, in this passage here, he could also be called uh, the Apostle Thomas, because he, or whatever he says, um, my Lord and my God, when Peter says that, Jesus calls him Peter. When Simon says that, Jesus calls him Peter, or Rock, Rocky, because you understand that I am the Rock. The Rock is God's another code word throughout the Hebrew Scriptures for God's plan of salvation. But uh, that uh, comment of Thomas is almost as much mocked as his disbelief. He says, my Lord and my God, but Jesus said, but you believe because you've seen, just think about those who believe and haven't. <clears throat> so poor old Thomas gets a bit uh, short-changed, even though he then goes on, I think I'm right in saying he goes on traditionally to India um, with the gospel. So he's an extraordinary character. But this opens with the, the line, um, doors locked and uh, Jesus came stood among them. I don't necessarily think that means that Jesus slid through the wall. Um, it's a bit like those uh, signs on doors and gates they please keep shut. Obviously, we have to open them to get through them, but we're supposed to shut them behind us. It doesn't mean that we have to go through the wall to get through. And uh, they will have been secure and had the doors bolted against the Jews. That doesn't mean they wouldn't open and unbolt the door for Jesus to come in through it. Um, it's just a, a perspective, a point of view. But uh, if we understand Jesus to have some sort of ephemeral body that can scoot through walls, um, then let us believe that. But I think the important thing, that aside is that we may have fears and doubts about our faith. And if this story is to be understood <clears throat> uh, in its sort of fuller sense, the motto, the moral of the story, is that God will take us at our own speed until such time as we feel able to um, assert our belief and we will have sufficient proofs. In the end, we have to choose ourselves. We can sit on the edge of the pool, we can see people swimming, we can see people bobbing about on their swim rings, we can feel that it's warm, we can know that it physics that we should float. <clears throat> we also know that people die and drown in water and it's used for torture and people can freeze to death, you know, lives are lost at sea, etc. We have to make that choice whether it's for us to jump in, to bob, to swim, whether we need support or help, whether we do it on our own one no one's looking. Uh, however we do it, it's our choice and God gives us time to make that decision. To the response we then back in morning prayer. During Easter season, death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your sting? Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpet will sound and the dead shall be raised. Where, O death, is your sting? We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your sting? The Song of Zechariah. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the cause of right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. I should say the refrain is common of martyrs if you're following in the book. Look up today's date and you'll find direction there. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the cause of right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia. <clears throat> Source, sun, essence, three in one, one in three, 
we come to you at the beginning of this day and uh, we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you for calling us and for taking us through those experiences of life that you have to bring us to this point. If we need more proof and evidence, we thank you for your grace that you'll provide that for us. And uh, if we need your conviction and strength to stand firm in the face of mockery and persecution, may Alfred pray for us and may, may we be that and st stand up for that which is right <clears throat> and for the, the uh, great good of those amongst whom we live and those whom we are called on to serve. And let us also be prepared to step aside when others come forward who are perhaps younger, fitter, brighter, better resourced financially to take on the mantle that we have borne thus far faithfully, perhaps begrudgingly, stoically, perhaps sacrificially, recognising what you have done in and through us, even if the time has come for us to step back and step down. With the World Council of Churches, prayers for Belarus, Moldova, and remarkably Russia and Ukraine, we give thanks for the faithful witness of churches under the reign of communism and their revitalization since then, after decades of official atheism. We pray for compassion and integrity for all peoples in these nations with such diverse ethnic histories, with a special blessing on the situation in uh, the countries. Today, we pray for the policies of Putin to be quashed, annulled, removed their power, his attitude and opinion to be exposed for what it is and uh, for lives to be saved, property to be saved and the restoration of a future and a hope for the uh, people of Ukraine to identify as they will and to live in the land of their choice and indeed for those of Russian ethnicity who live in that country or did live in that country and would wish to return we pray for healing justice and if it can fit in with those things forgiveness <clears throat> from Christian Action Research Education we are invited to pray during this economic crisis for the church to work with people who are in need we pray for unity between Christians, that it will grow, that they'll be able to share together in effective ways to meet the needs of communities and local communities and those further afield. From Green Christian, having to watch, look at it through my browser these days because uh, it's changed the way it works. I'm not quite sure in terms of settings how to get this thing downloaded. However, we're there. Um, just scrolling through to look and see where the Post continues because it's a print ready edition and it's not that easy to see where we go on to. I think I'm there, okay. The biggest climate protest yet is taking place this weekend from tomorrow until Monday. We join for, with campaigners for the big one as they take a stand against fossil fuel company greed and government inaction, which is fueling both the cost of living crisis and the climate crisis. They're working to bring 100,000 people to protest outside the House of Parliament in London, directly taking their call for change to those in power. Back in 2019, 10,000 people came out on the streets of London shortly after Parliament declared environmental and climate emergency, but not enough has changed in the behaviour of those in power. Each day has a theme. Um, Christian Climate Action, you can see website... Uh, Tedious on that website. So we pray for um, fair and just reporting, unlike that which has um, attended those people who've uh, protested at the Grand National, which uh, for many is a public national event on which they can uh, make money or lose money. But for others, it is a cruel um, continuation of the expression of cruelty associated with hunting and uh, the lack of respect for the animals as they're put through those torturous training regimes and uh, treacherous obstacles they have to navigate. So we pray for a sophisticated, open, welcome, inclusive, accurate, true journalism and representation that people may, as Thomas did, make up their own mind on balance. The Anglican Communion has five marks of mission, the fifth of which is our concern for the environment. And Pope Francis' prayer includes the lines, O God of the poor, help us to rescue the abandoned and forgotten of this earth, so precious in your eyes. 
bring healing to our lives, that we may protect the world and not prey on it, that we may sow beauty, not pollution and destruction. A benefit cycle on Wednesday, we pray for teachers, and uh, so we do, whether they are involved with children in schools or uh, adults with or without learning difficulties, adding value, enabling people to live independent lives, or to learn skills of creativity to broaden and expand their experience and joy of life. And uh, we thank you for them. May they, um, a little bit like uh, Moses, be prepared to pass on the mantle to others and step back as they, as they teach, grow even in increased knowledge and ability than they had themselves, that they might uh, set them free to grow and flourish and perhaps be other examples and or teachers themselves in the future. And pray especially for teachers who are facing Ofsted inspections and uh, challenges to their terms and conditions through um, the collective selfishness of those of us who don't want to pay uh, sufficient to keep enough staff in schools and teachers uh, and uh, students adequately uh, supported with teach and teaching assistance. Uh, we pray that unions and families, uh, bosses and others within that organisation, local authorities and uh, the uh, academy trusts, they will recognise the value of those, those in that profession and they will work to retain and improve their experience of the job and their wider quality of life. We pray for our people today for the wardens of the St Peter group, as I call it, John and Chris at St Peter's Holton, Jonathan at St Peter's Weniston, Ginny at St Andrew's Bramfield, Alison at All Saints Blyford, uh, Mike at St Peter's Thorrington, um, also for the other um, officers in those PCCs and electoral roles in Holton, got names of uh, Jill, Helen, Anthony, Dot, Betty, Mary, Diane, Marjorie, Jane, Julian, Linda, Eric, Phyllis, Edith, Janet, Gemma, Jackie in Weniston. Alison will include her. Margaret's Bloomfield, Goldsmith, Goldston. Pray for healing on those amongst them, those Margaret's who are poorly. Also, Angela, Mary, Moira, Francis, Valerie, Dorothy, Jane, Robert, Cyrilla, Colin, Jennifer, Felicity, Vivian, Graham, Ruth, John, Sally, David, Diana, Joanna, Jean, Suzanne, Clive, Francis, and Colin. And for those unnamed on the electoral rolls, which I don't have uh, names of in the other parishes. <coughs> And we pray a blessing on them as they go through their APCMs, their annual meetings, as people are newly uh, reappointed or choose to step down. We pray that they, like Moses, will know your grace in doing so. And uh, we pray that you will call others to join in, uh, particularly at uh, Blyford and Bramfield. We thank you for the uh, excellent uh, APCM pre-chat at Thorrington that brought people and money in there. So we thank you for that. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Turn the rock of Shanti Rebash Bahamas, but a good Eshim Hiriham as Baro Hadia Rasha Sandra Kavalium as Barovish and Sora Ham Ashbalaf, Fresh and Sara Hadim Karabat Nasu Rash Bahadas of the Kashim Seri Pesh Basami Ashna Allah. Chair your Hosani Kamadra Meshbish or Son of Kahane Pekham Mikirish nor Ramesh Messemi Haragania Alashma. Chair your Hamir Rebish Benimel Hadia Kasama Yahmash Morobo Hom Yahavishim Seri. By your Sadala Metian Hasama Kapadu Hol on your Kazik Lamas Bianishan. Prima <laughs> Merciful God, who raised up your servant Alfred to be a pastor of your people and give him grace, gave him grace to suffer for justice and true religion, grant that we who celebrate his martyrdom may know the power of the risen Christ in our hearts and share his peace in lives offered to your service. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Goodbye to those on YouTube.
and Facebook.